basketball fans welcome back so Kyrie gets real on his partnership with Luka Doncic we like going against the best so this is an article from Fadeaway World so let's just talk about this so Kyrie explained in detail what he thinks his role in the Dallas Mavericks is alongside Luka Doncic so even before we start I mean people who know basketball know that Kyrie is the Kyrie Irving is the best team he's the best player in that team and this is no disrespect, disrespect to Luka Doncic, but you have to put out some respect on Kyrie Irving. This is a man that is an NBA champion. He's been in the finals three times. He hit one of the most iconic clutch shots that called the series against the Warriors to come back down 3-1. And since then, he has just been a very exciting player to watch. He has the best finish, best moves, best handles in the league and have even putting even the Mavs being in a situation to trade him was caught me by surprise because I didn't even know where Kyrie was going to be traded to especially coming off that situation from the Brooklyn Nets last year so it's almost a year since Kyrie was traded and his stand with the Mavs has, has been good okay they didn't make the playoffs last last postseason but this postseason they look they might and looking at the way that duo is just you know moving last year i know there was a lot of uncertainty because Kyrie was heading into a he, he was on a contract year the dallas mavericks absorbed an expiring contract and the good thing is in the off season they made sure to give Kyrie the max money they gave him a three-year believe a 143 million dollar deal so he's getting about 38 39 140 million a year so he's being taken care of well even despite the off-court issues that he had, he's been able to bounce back and focus on much more uh, more basketball. And Kyrie, he has managed to revitalize his NBA career after a contentious season with the Brooklyn Nets, especially with the off-court drama, especially with the tweet that he made that you know made him lose his Nike deal, made him get fined, and he lost a lot of things. I know the NBA tried to cancel Kyrie, but because Kyrie is such a talented player, he was able to bounce back rather quickly. I know Nike dropped him, but he got a good five-year deal with Anta to sponsor his shoes and make his shoes. I'm going to miss Kyrie's sneakers, but anyway, it was a tumultuous season, but he's able to, he has been able to bounce back from that. So Kyrie opened up his relationship with Luka Doncic to ESPN's Tick McMahon and how the pair has have had incredible respect for each other especially looking at how they were acquired i know the dallas mavericks made a huge mistake of letting go of jalen brunson and looking at how jalen brunson is thriving with the knicks i know it was it was a necessity that they needed to get like a point guard to play alongside luka Doncic because a lot of times luka Doncic was looking all alone in there and swinging on a deal to get Kyrie, I can just say it was just a compensation move. I'm not saying it was a bad move, but if they still had Jalen Brunson, I don't think they would have traded it for Kyrie. But the situation presented itself. They didn't want to give Jalen Brunson that max money. And Jalen Brunson is playing so well. But this word video, we we'll just be focusing on Kyrie because Kyrie has been exceptional. They gave him the max money that he wanted, a fully loaded contract. It's not a super max, but it's, a, it's the same. It's, the, it's the, the same realm that he got in Brooklyn. So, so Kyrie talks about this relationship with Luka Doncic, and he quotes, "I think what you saw last year was us having the more, uh, the utmost respect for each other and not trying to step on each other's toes. We have created a legacy here already, and I'm." The new guy coming into Dallas. There's a synchronicity that people have felt on the last six years with him and built that comrad camaraderie with him. So I just want to add on to that. So he spoke further about the similarities both of them in terms of their competitive attitude, which is the genesis of the relationship they are building. So he's a winner, I'm a winner, he's a big gamer, I'm a big gamer. We look. We, we like going against the best, and we feel. And I then, and that's why I feel like we connect at this point in his career, in my career, particularly talking about me and Luca. It's about how to galvanize the rest of the group. We help each other grow as people, and then the basketball part. The basketball part is the easy part. So, Kyrie then got real 
about understanding that he is a mentor to the young guys of the franchise. So the, the Mavericks have eight players on the roster that they are under the age of 25. So these are relatively, like half of them are just relatively young. So Luka Doncic uh, being there among the, and you have Kyrie who's 31. That actually he's 31 now. I needed mentors when I was, he also continues saying, I needed mentors when I was growing up in the league. So I feel like that role I play here, being a very young mentor to Luca, to all these guys, because I've seen a lot, done a lot. I failed at the highest level, especially talking about the 2015 and 2017 NBA championship and that uh, bad 2019 run with the Boston Celtics. He failed at the highest level and succeeded at the highest level. And I want to get back to that place. So he's been looking towards getting back to the finals since 2017. The last time LeBron, the last time Kyrie was in the finals was when he was playing with LeBron James. So just sign or sign or sign. So Irving is averaging 25.2 points, 5.1 rebounds, and 5.3 assists this season. He could he could have been a contender to make another All Star game but had notable injury absences in the first two months of the season, making it highly unlikely for him to make it. But Irving's comment preceded the Mavericks nine point loss to the league's leading Boston Celtics when Irving, Irving had 23 points in a showcase uh, where Luka Doncic were comfortably outgunned by Jay Tatum and Jalen Brown. So. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, just keep you know uh, letting Kyrie know that you know he had he he was the he was the problem especially in the Boston Celtics. He was the one that stunk up the gym, especially the 2019 postseason against the Milwaukee Bucks. So they always every time I see the Celtics match up against a Kyrie Irving team, they always try to like stick in on Kyrie. It happened when it happened when Kyrie was playing with with the Brooklyn Nets and right now the Dallas Mavericks. Every single opportunity Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they see Kyrie. They always want to outgun Kyrie every single time. And I feel like it comes, It this is a, a very silent rivalry that dates back in the 2018-2019 season where Kyrie just had like the worst uh, media attention I've ever seen. And this is not like even the preceding, like what he did, especially with that tweet that he made about uh, about a year ago. But given like the way he was coming off the media and gay, gay and just saying those off pocket comments that rubbed his teammates the wrong way so his former teammates always want to come and outgun Kyrie so that's one thing that I've seen especially Jason Taylor and Jalen Brown they're on the receiving end then but they're not in the receiving it now because they're they are the team that made the 2020 NBA finals without Kyrie with Kyrie the farthest that they got was the West, was the East Finals, and they couldn't get the job done. So, Kyrie Irving has found love and happiness uh, in basketball once again. Something that has just eluded him, and in and and one thing that I've seen that is the aspect that has been missing in his game because in the in the stance that he had, he had a lot of off court drama, off court issues be it the vaccine be it that tweet that he made that you know put some uh, anti-semitic uh, views on him and it made him look uh, in a certain way that the league did not want him and he was also in, in just a lot of controversy especially with the off-pocket comments that he was making which was rubbing the team the wrong way his team the wrong way and also rubbing the NBA the wrong way so the thing is Kyrie right now he has found a place where he can just focus on playing ball and I really I really love the fact that he's not uh, on the media a lot especially when it comes to like making those off pocket comments the reason as to why the Brooklyn the Brooklyn Nets are made they are a big market team just alongside the New York Knicks so they have their yes network where they reach a lot of people in New York it's a basket it's a it's a basketball uh, city so Anything that well, Kyrie was saying was monitored and it reached a lot of people. And even with the stand with the Boston Celtics, a lot of things were magnified. So the thing is, Kyrie right now just focusing on basketball is the best thing that has happened to him. 
and he should just do that and finding an organization like the Dallas Mavericks who are going to just tap into that to uh, look towards making the finals or even you know going deeper in the playoffs that is actually what is needed for Kyrie so I'm happy to see Kyrie who has been able to just bounce back from that dark year that he had and try to just focus on basketball especially having uh, an organization like the Mavs they're not a uh, huge they're not a big market team like that they don't have like the most coverage like that which I feel like it's something that Kyrie did not need especially with his character as a person this is actually this will actually make him uh, focus more on basketball and I'm very happy to see him paired with a guy like Luka Doncic because the thing is he has been he has had like the luxury of very good teammates around him but he has not been able to win anything significant outside of LeBron James being his best teammate so we're just going to see how far will the Mavs go please do let me know what you think in the comment section what you think about this and also subscribe to the channel hit the bell I'm out. Peace.